I want you to commit today to come back to the house. A very good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. I hope you're ready to have a great time in the presence of the Lord. Welcome to Vive Church, where we love God, love people, and catalyze purpose. That's what God has called us to do, and we are fully committed to doing that. Uh, my name is Jesse Ntabora, and I have the awesome privilege of leading and being part of the worship team here at Five Church. And, 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 and it's just amazing to be part of this serving team. Uh, please do us a favor. Tell us where you are watching from right now. Type it in the chat box right there. And you know what? Go right ahead. Take a next step and, and invite someone. Share that link. There will be a link shared on, on your screen right there. Copy it and share it with somebody. Invite someone to church this morning. Don't just enjoy by yourself. Come on, invite someone else to come and join in uh, as we worship the Lord together this morning. You know what? Before we start our worship this morning, are you ready? Are you excited to worship the Lord this morning? Before we start, I just wanted to let you know what's happening at Vive Church. And one of the things that we do here at Vive Church is to gather together in small families. Uh, right now we're doing it online on Zoom, but we gather in small families by location and, and we fellowship together every Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 7 or 8 p.m. And, 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 and we just have fun. We, we share the word, we play games, we connect with one another, uh, wherever we we are staying because we believe in small groups. We believe uh, that, that real church happens when we gather in small groups and talk and talk about what's going on in our lives with a small group of people. And that's what we call five crews. So be sure to log on uh, on Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, so that we have a great time. You know, something else that is exciting that we do here at Vive Church is what we call Awaken Morning Glory. And this happens every day from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, be sure to log on. There will be a link shared. Be sure to log on uh, and, and let's pray together. Let's commune together. Before you start your day, make sure that you spend the first hour in the presence of the Lord, uh, communing with other believers, praying and believing God for whatever you might need. And it is exciting. Here at Vive Church, we believe in our children. So there's something special that has been prepared for our children. And every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., we, we are logged on onto church, children's church. Uh, uh, so please, if you have children, make sure that they log on at 9 a.m. Uh, to 10 a.m. Again, a link will be shared on your screen. Make sure that they don't miss out on church. They might not be able to attend church with you at 10.30 right now a.m., but they have a special package for them to be able to also connect with God and have church all right so are you ready are you ready for worship come on are you ready to worship the Lord let's just get together gather together let's get ready to have a party in the house of the Lord this morning come on let's get up let's get up get up on your feet come on put your hands together for Jesus hey Breaking open every tide of mine Your love is breathing out into my life You take my burden and you make it light You make it light Let me hear you sing Bringing a sound that will break the night I choose to follow you for all my life I know that you are always by my side You're by my side In everything in everything we do, we choose to praise you No matter what they say, we will go your way Dancing to your beat, we can't contain it We're letting heaven loose as we celebrate This is how we party Lifting up the name of Jesus Every moment in your freedom Makes me wanna dance Makes me wanna take Let me see you dancing for Jesus 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 hey, oh, oh. All right, put your hands together, come on, come on 
Here we go together we sing Breaking open every tide of mine Your love is breathing out into my life You take my burden and you make it lie You make it lie Bring it, bring in the sound of the break the night I choose to follow you for all my life I know that you will always by my side You're by my side In everything, in everything we do We choose to praise you No matter what they say We will go your way Dancing to your beat We can't contain it We're letting heaven loose Celebrate This is how we party Lifting up the name of Jesus for Jesus put your hands together like this come on come on come on I want you to move in your living room let's go let's go move to the left move to the left come on let me see you move there move to the right hey let's go let's go move to the left move to the left let's have a party this morning come on move to the right move to the ah, let's do it African the African is a Telemuka 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 let me see you dancing for Jesus Panda Panda let me see you jump 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 let's dance for Jesus hey, hey. all right together we sing this is how we party say we define the party come on this is how we party Say, we define the party. Sing it again. Say, this is how we party. Hey, we define the party. This is how we party. We define the party. Say, this is how we party. Lifting up the name of Jesus. to dance like David danced come on that's what the Bible says we dance like David danced no matter what uh, what is happening around you when we come in the presence of God it is a party because God is doing so much in our lives and if you got a glimpse of how much he's doing behind the scenes for your life you just lift up your voice and begin to dance and celebrate in fact being here today is worth celebrating saying god thank you for an amazing week thank you that i've that i've made it to the end of the week we take it for granted but not very many people have made it today but you're here today i want to encourage you to lift up your hands lift up your voice and begin to tell Jesus, thank you, thank you so much for what you're doing right now, for what you've done for me. It might not be much in my eyes, but Lord, I know that all things are working out for my good and for the glory of the Lord. Come and lift up your voice. Worship him this morning. I declare and decree that it's going to be well with you this morning. Whatever is not working out is working out right now. 
as you dance and celebrate Jesus and focus on him, he's working out all things for your good. Come and lift up your voice. Lord, we worship you. Oh, we worship you, God. Our God is able. Come on, together we sing. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Come on, together we sing, lift up your voice Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won, for you have never failed me yet. Oh yeah, oh, oh, oh. your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in my confidence you've never failed me yet Ooh, you never fail me Lord Ooh, lift up your voice I know the night won't last your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, 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 you're still enough. Oh, keep me within your love. Oh, my heart will sing your praise again. Lift up your voice. right now every mountain is moving in your life right now in Jesus mighty name yes Lord you move mountains you move mountains oh, oh, oh. come on lift up your voice together we declare by faith by faith we declare say I've seen you move say
promise still stands. Come and lift up your voice. Praise your faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hand. I'm still in your hand. Lift up that voice. This is my Declare it this morning. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. Your this is my confidence. One more time we declare. I've seen you move. Say, I've seen you move. You move the mountain. And I believe. I'll see you do it again. You made a the Lord. The song says believe it. Whatever you're going through believe that there's a breakthrough for you. Whatever it is financially, emotionally, physically, whatever it is, I pray that God will believe you'll believe that there's a breakthrough for you. For he said it in his word. So you should believe it.
Thank you, Jesus. Friends, I want to, even, even as we continue in this moment of worship, I pray that it doesn't pass you by. I pray that this is not just any other ordinary service that we come to and, you know, just do business as usual. In the presence of God, there's no business as usual. Every day, every moment is an encounter with Him. So I want to encourage you right now, wherever you are, however many you are, hold your hands together. As a family, if you are alone, come on, lift up your hands and begin to pray to God. Begin to talk to your Father. He loves to hear His children cry out to Him. So come on, lift up your hands, lift up your voice, join hands together as a family and believe God for the impossible. Whatever it is, I might not know it, but guess what? I'm here to declare to you the truth. And the truth is that God knows you more than you know yourself more than you know yourself he cries with you if you're going through a tough time he celebrates with you if you are going through a, 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 an amazing time whatever it is that you're going through our god identifies with you jesus called jesus refers to himself as the one as our savior and why does he do so as our high priest why does he do so because he went through everything, every temptation that you could ever go through, every trouble that you could ever go through, our God went through it. That's why he qualifies to be your high priest. So when you cry out to our God, we're not crying out to some distant being out there. He's so near. The Bible says that he's near to the brokenhearted. So I want to dare you this morning to lift up your voice. Come on, let's pray. In, a, in 30 seconds, lift up your voice. Cry out to God. If you have a need, share it in that family where you are at right now with that loved one that you're with. And if you are alone again, come on, lift up your voice. He hears you, our God. He hears the cry of our hearts. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, this morning we come to you as children, helpless without you, hopeless without you, oh God. And saying, Father, that you'll come and take us, lift us up, oh God. Lord, we want to sit in your presence. We want to dwell in your presence, oh God, because there we find joy, peace, everything that we need, oh God. Father, I thank you for every request that has been lifted up in this place. I pray, oh God, that Father, you will hear the cry of your children, oh God, and that you will meet each one that is logged on today, this morning, at the point of their need, oh God. Father, you love us, and may that love be the security that we stand on. May that love be the confidence that we come to in your presence today this morning and say, oh God, come and do the impossible. Wash us clean. Those that are feeling guilty this morning, I pray that Heavenly Father, they will be, rem they will remind, they will be re reminded, oh God, of your love that surpasses all sin and that you're ready with open arms to welcome them back home, oh God. Lord, for those, of those that, are, that are believing you, for, for whatever it is that has been lifted up this morning, I pray that, Father, you will do the impossible because we know you are able to, oh God. Lord, I pray that your will will be fulfilled in every person's soul that is connected, that is, that is joining in faith with us here this morning, oh God. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. We exalt you above all else, oh God. May you be the center of our lives, Heavenly Father. Lord, even as we go through this service, oh God, and hear from you, we are already uh, enjoying your presence. But Lord, even as, as we hear the word and everything else that is going to be said and done here this morning, I pray that we will not leave this place the same. That we, we, we will be reminded of who we are, sons and daughters of the Most High God. Thank you, Lord. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said a big amen and amen and amen. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, I don't know about you. Uh, uh, allow me to put this uh, weapon down. I don't know about you, but man, any time, any moment in the presence of God is worth more than a thousand elsewhere. That's what David said, that one day in the house of the Lord, a minute in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand elsewhere. Our God is the only one that can satisfy your soul. I want to say that again this morning for someone. Our God is the only one that will satisfy the deepest desire of your heart. Your husband won't do it. Your wife can't do it. Your children will never satisfy you. Your best friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever money, money can never satisfy you. Our God is the one that can satisfy the deepest desire of your heart. So I hope and I pray that even as you begin this week that you will you will grab a hold of him and choose to walk with him every day of your life. Wow, thank you so much. Come on. Uh, I know we can't see you, but give it up for the worship team and for the amazing job. That it's not easy, my friend, to stand up here and just worship the Lord. Eh? Uh, uh, but these guys put in the work, the effort to make sure that they are ready for God to use them as instruments to reach your heart. So one more time, give it up for the worship team. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, guys. Every day faithfully for serving. Come on, one more time, give it up for the tech team. There are guys behind the scene, by the way, that you don't see that are on the camera. Jonal, Dennis, Andrew has gone out. Bridget, there's so many guys. Pastor Diana, always behind the scenes. One day, she'll come here and give you a word, seasoned from the Lord. Eh? <laughs> Be ready for that. But right now she's behind the scenes making sure that man, to this morning we enjoy the presence of the Lord. And you know what friends, this cannot be possible without your faithful giving. This is only possible. We are able to come here live to you in, your, in the comfort of your home or wherever you are because you're giving faithfully to the work, to the gospel of the Lord to be preached and so that many more souls can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So now it's, it's another exciting time that we have here at Vive Church where we get to give back to the Lord. We get to give of our tithes and offering. And like I said, this doesn't go to our pastor's pocket. Yeah, okay, It doesn't. This is fully used for the glory of the Lord and to expand the kingdom of God here on earth. And you know what? Give your very best. Get out your wallet, whatever it is that you want to give. Come on. I, 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 get it out and, and, and actually right now we're doing virtual means, right? <laughs> so, so forgive me for being old school. I'm still in the, the non-lockdown uh, days. But yeah, uh, <laughs> there, are, there are options for us to give. You can use a, a, a bank transfer, right? You can give a bank, use a bank transfer. You can use a MTN, a Momo Pay, I believe. Uh, the codes are right there. You can use Airtel money. You can use Flutterwave. I mean, you have no excuse not to give back to the Lord this morning. And as you give, the awesome worship team, which I am part of, <laughs> is going to bless you uh, with another worship moment. Our God is strong in battle. Our God can never fail. Through Him our chains are broken. In Him the sick are healed. In the name of Jesus, giants are defeated. Every single mountain has to move. You're faithful to your promise. You finish what you started. There is none as powerful as you. Every 
Uh, into the word of God this very morning. I trust that God is going to speak to you in as much as he's going to speak to all of us here uh, as we bring to you uh, the word of God. I'm excited to be back into your spaces to bring forth the word. I trust that you've been well. Tell me, give me an emoji sign that would tell me how you have been. You know, if uh, it's been all right, give me a smiley emoji. If it's been a tough week, but you are a tough cookie, give me a flat emoji. If you know, it's been tough, but you know your God is stronger. Uh, you know, give me an emoji of power, you know. Give me some emoji. You know, if it's been, you know, I, I don't have the words for it, just give me an emoji that would probably describe uh, what you would have said your week has been. My week has been fantastic. I have, uh, you know, enjoyed the goodness of the Lord and I'm glad that God has been good to me and God has kept you alive so you could hear this word one more time. We've been in a series uh, of discussing the Holy Spirit and this week we bring it all 
to an end, and I trust that as we do that, God will minister to you, and that as God would minister to you, God would minister to me too. Do this, do this. Why don't you spend a minute or two or less in inviting somebody right now? Let them know the word is about to flow. If you are in a house where there's many people, why don't you go ahead even right now and just invite them, get them into the living room, get them onto your phone, your laptop, you know, your projector, get them onto whatever gadget you're using so that we get to share the word of God together. Can we pray together, right? Can we pray together? Let's take a minute and pray together indeed. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you this morning because you are the King of kings and you remain the Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you for men. But even men, at their very best, they still remain men. And yet, Lord, you are above. No man can be compared to you. And so this morning we come to adore, to worship, to lift your name up on high, but also to say you're the God that's faithful. There are some men that have desired to come in and help, you know, in a way or two, but they don't even have the capacity to help. Others have the capacity, but even when they've intended to come in and, you know, give a hand in the middle of the process, their humanity sets in. And so, Lord, this morning, we love you, we trust you, we rely on you because you're the only one who men can rely on. You are loyal, you are faithful. Even when we are faithless, you remain faithful. And so, Lord, this morning, we worship you. Lord, I pray that as your word comes forth, that it will come forth with precision, that you will speak to our hearts, that indeed you will remind us of what we need to know and that we will become a better people in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen and amen and amen and amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, as we've started the Holy Spirit in the previous couple of weeks, we've, uh, and, uh, you know, explored many things. One, that the Holy Spirit is a person, that the Holy Spirit is not a dove, he's not fire, uh, that he's not water, he's not oil. You know, that the Holy Spirit is, in fact, God, a uh, part of the Godhead, and fully God. And, and, and so many things that we have discussed that I believe uh, will transform your life. And if you're here for the very first time, take a breather, you know, uh, you know, at the end of this or maybe later in the week, get to catch some of those sermons on our YouTube channel. We keep all of them there and we ensure that they are ready for you to view them. Turn with me to the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. This is what the word of God says, Zechariah chapter 4. If you have your Bible, get, get it, get it, get it, get it very quickly. Zechariah chapter 4, this is what the Bible says in verse 6. He said, so he answered <laughs> to them, he answered and he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Patrick Mohereza. This is the word of the Lord uh, to, to, to Zerubbabel. This, change Zerubbabel and put your name. This is the word of the Lord to Jonal. This is the word of the Lord to Neil. This is the word of the Lord. Come on, change, your, change that name and put your name. He says this, so he answered to me and he said this. He said that this is the word of the Lord to Patrick Muhereza. That this thing you want of kingdom advancement, that this thing you're trying to do of life fulfillment, that this thing you're doing in ministry, that this business you're running, that everything you are about to do, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is in fact by the Spirit of the living God, says the Lord. He's saying something. He's saying, listen, your destiny is not going to be achieved by your ordinary power, your ministry. You cannot achieve what God intends for you to achieve ordinarily by your skill sets, 
or even just by your gifting. He's saying the thing you're trying to achieve, your life, your business, your family, parenting, relationships, my goodness, kingdom advancement, kingdom expansion. You're trying to secure another job. You're trying to secure a career advancement. You're trying to get another deal for your business. What he's saying is that, listen, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it is, in fact, by the spirit of the living God. The manifestation of God within a territory can only happen by the spirit of of the living God. All of life that you're living, you're going to live it out victorious, victoriously, not by your own effort, but by the Spirit of the living God. In as much as the Holy Spirit is fully God, a part of the Godhead, a part of the Trinity, He, the Holy Spirit, carries a unique role. He carries a unique office. He carries a unique responsibility. And today we're going to do a quick Bible study on that. We're going to understand the attributes, right? The attributes that he, the Holy Spirit, brings to your life so that you become the victorious. You come on, somebody say, I am victorious. Hallelujah. So those attributes, those attributes that he brings to you, enables you to be powered by the Holy Spirit. For my note takers, the people that have notebooks, the people that get to tweet, those people that get to put notes down on a gadget somewhere. For the sermon title today, we are discussing powered by the Holy Spirit. We are discussing the power that enables you, that empowers you, that ministers to you, the Holy Spirit. Powered by the Holy Spirit. You know, I come from a marketing background. That's what I read. That's what I studied. And it's the business I do, uh, you know, among the many other uh, enterprises that I run, you know. But back in the marketing field, we, we build concepts and build activities and we go out to look for uh, organizations or entities that can put money to the line so that they are, you know, by th through these entities, through these activities, through these expressions, we are able to give them mileage. They are able to reach into your homes. They are able to come into your, you know, digital spaces uh, so that you see them and maybe consider them, right? And so we say that this event or this activity or this scenario or, you know, this has been brought to you by, uh, powered by, uh, sponsored by, or this activity has been backed up by, you know what I mean? Or it's been brought to you by, let me tell you, the victorious you has been powered by the Holy Spirit. That's why Zechariah says that it's not by power, it's not by might, but it is by the Holy Spirit. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why in Isaiah, Isaiah 30, chapter 20, chapter 30 and verse 21, he says this, that he says that your, your, your ears shall hear a voice behind you saying this. He shall hear a sound behind you saying this, saying this is the way, walk ye in it. Whenever you turn to the right or whenever you turn to the left, hey, listen, I will be with you. Your rest is predicated on that. That voice that you hear is the Holy Spirit. That voice is the person of the Holy Spirit. The same voice is referenced in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. You know the story where Adam and Eve, you know, the Bible tells us that, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God Almighty amongst the trees of the garden. The voice of that voice is the person of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that guides you through experiences, the one that speaks to you. Uh, you know, Jesus is referenced in the Bible as the Word of God, right? But the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. You know, you know uh, if you're going to live the, the victorious life, you need to be a person that has sharpened the hearing of the voice of God so that you, you know, you can, you, 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 you can know when he tells you, turn to the left, turn to the right, do this, do that, because he is our guide. He is our counsel. He is the one that powers us up. He is, in fact, the one that stirs, up, uh, stirs us up 
to be all that God intended us to be. The victorious you is powered by the Holy Spirit. When I was much younger, I used to watch a lot of videos by, uh, you know, uh, God's generals like Catherine Coleman, um, you know, uh, Blessed Memory, and, and uh, God's generals like Pastor Benny Hinn. And every time you'd hear them, you'd hear them talk about something like this. They would say, you know, uh, you'd hear, for instance, Catherine Coleman on, on her crusades should be crying out and saying, ah, do not grieve my Holy Spirit. He's Oh, I got his all. She would be crying, literal tears, saying, do not grieve him. You know, when I hear Pastor Ben Heaney saying, listen, he is my everything. He's my everything. And you know, it used to, I, I used to wonder back then when I was younger in the faith, I used to be thinking the reality and the substance of what they are saying seems to be real. Right? And I seem, how can you be so convinced about somebody that you do not see? And yet, what they were going through seemed to be so real until I had an encounter for myself, until I came to the place of understanding that my goodness, my goodness, you know, that he is real, that he is pres present, and that when you understand him, when you have an encounter with him, you get to know what he can do within your life. He turns around your life. He gets, you know, he is able to come into your life, ordinary life, and turn that around and make it extraordinary. He's able to come into your life and turn around a dying life a deteriorating life and make it extraordinary, supernatural. Many of us have encountered the son of the living God. You know, many of us have, have, have him. We have the God life. We've encountered Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But a few of us have had a real encounter with the Holy Spirit and have, in fact, an appreciation of who the Holy Spirit is. And as such, many of us, you know, are not able to be effective and victorious in this our Christian experience. Like any sponsor or powering entity, when you power up an activity or when you power up an event, you, you, you know, you bring either resources or capacity, you bring certain attributes to the table. You know, if, if, if you're going to run an event and it's going to be sponsored by, say, uh, you know, give me, give me a brand you like, you know, give me a brand, give me a brand, type it in the chat right now, give me a brand that you, did, you like, you know, that if you are to do an event, this brand will definitely be your brand. So give me your brand, give me your brand. Some of you are dropping, uh-huh, telcos, okay, drop those, drop those. Give me a brand. Come on, dog. Come on. Type it in the chat. Let's see which brands you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, what's that? Uh, 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 yee. Come on, man. Ah, man. I have, you know, the guys in the production studio where I am at are looking for AfriCell to sponsor. <laughs> you know, they are living in the past, you know. Some of you have MTN. Some of you have Nike. Nike. Uh, for your shoe lovers, some of you have, uh, what's that? Gucci, uh, we had, some of you have Gucci, uh, you know, some of you have Apple. Uh, what are, are some of those other brands? Come and type them in the chat. But you know, every entity will bring certain attributes to the table. Are we together? So for instance, if, if, if an entity that has money is going to sponsor your event, they're going to bring certain resources to the table. Sometimes they'll bring their capacity. Sometimes they'll bring their team. Sometimes they'll bring their media presence. Sometimes they'll bring something to the table. So uh, as we talk about powered by the Holy Spirit, I want you to understand today what it is that the Holy Spirit brings to you to make you a victorious one. What are those attributes that the Holy Spirit gives you access too, so that we can talk about you to be powered by the Holy Spirit. The next time you're introducing yourself, you're going to be saying that, hey, my name is Patrick Muhereza, powered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, you're going to be putting your name and you're going to be saying, my name is so-and-so brought to you by the Holy Spirit. Oh, my name is so-and-so inspired or directed or guided by the Holy Spirit. My name is so-and-so and I'm brought to you by the Holy Spirit. So what are those attributes that the Holy Spirit surely does bring 
you to or bring to the table to make you a victorious one. Number one, the very, very beginning one of them, we're going to do a quick Bible study. But even as we do, please write this down because this is powerful. This is revelatory, you know. Uh, it's number one, he is a revealer of the word of God. The Holy Spirit reveals the word of God. He reveals the word of God. Out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, we'll read down all the way down to about verse 12. He says this. It's on your screen. He says this. He says, but it is written. I has not seen, no ear heard, no have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God, listen to this, read verse 10 together with me if you are a Christian. It says, but God has revealed them to us. How? Through his spirit. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. You see, let me just pause right there and tell you that if you do not have access to the Holy Spirit, that really means that you do not have access to genuine revelation. He is the revealer of the word of God. Verse 11 says this, for what man knows, uh, for what man, I beg your pardon, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows, knowledge, no one knows, that's why he's a revealer, no one knows the things of God except by the spirit of God. Now, I, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that how that we might know. Do you see that? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us. Listen, what you don't know might be limiting you from experiencing who really God is. And the spirit of God is a revealer, revelation that we might know. He brings it out that the things which God has freely given to all of us, that we might know and have a full knowledge of what it is that we carry. Revelation, revelation. When you see men acting as though they, they outsource a dimension of knowledge from another source, you are probably right. But the vehicle that brings that knowledge is the Holy Spirit through the revelation. The Holy Spirit is able to go and search from the bowels of heaven and bring wisdom, insight, knowledge, ideas, and bring it forth to ordinary men and turn their ordinary lives into signs and wonders. Let me say this. You are about to be transformed. You are about, the moment you get to understand who the Holy Spirit is, your life cannot remain ordinary. You will be completely transformed. Jesus was teaching one time in John 16 and verse 13, and he talks about this. He talks about the fact that he has to go and where he's going, we cannot go. And he says that it's for our advantage that he's going because he had so many things he had to tell us. But he says this, he says uh, that you cannot understand them now. But we pick it out from verse 13 and he says that however, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he will do what? Read it with me. Guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak he will direct you. He will tell you even of the things to come. You see, it's not enough to have access to truth. You must be guided because truth without guidance can kill. Truth without guidance can destroy you. Oh my goodness, I'm preaching well. I need to watch this message sometime. My goodness. Ah. <laughs> Listen, did you know that truth without guidance can kill you? Were you ever told? It's, it's not only a lie that can kill you, but also truth unguided can destroy you. It's like carrying a sword, a double-edged sword. 
If you don't know which part to hold or even how to appropriately hold it, it will kill you. So if I reveal to you, if I come now and tell you and you give your life, you know, speak, preach the word of God and, you know, you get, you get born again and I tell you, you know, God is desirous to make you rich and wealthy. That's true. But if I don't teach you the other elements that, 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 that make a fair balance of God's word, you will live out your salvation journey only with the bias of being, you know, being, being, being that's why they say some of the, 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 you know, the, some of the people in the body of Christ are only preaching prosperity messages. So truth can kill you, but it has got to be guided. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit you know, will guide us in all truth. Why? Because it's the spirit of truth. And when he comes, he indeed will be the revealer of the word of God. Number two, he's the revealer, number one, of the word of God. But number two, he confirms God's word. He confirms God's word. The Holy Spirit confirms God's word. And out of the book of Isaiah chapter 44, we're going to read two verses there. It says this in verse uh, 24. Uh, chapter 44 and verse 24. All the way down to verse 26. He says that thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. Read it with me. He says, and he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord speaking about himself, who makes all things who stretches out all the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. He's speaking about himself. Number 25, he says this, who frustrates the signs of babblers and drives diviners mad. Do you have a diviner that is on your case? This is what the Bible says, that he frustrates diviners. He frustrates the signs of babblers and drives diviners mad. He also says, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness. But read verse 26 with me if you have a mouth. He says, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of what? His messengers, the Holy Spirit, is in fact the dimension of the Trinity, the dimension of the Godhead that is responsible for the manifestation of the word of God. He confirms the word of God, performs the counsel of his messenger. You cannot desire manifestation. You cannot desire the manifestation of signs and wonders and neglect the power of the Holy Spirit. Every single provision that we find in the word of God that is made available to us as saints, to us as Christians, to us who have found him as our Lord and Savior, every single provision that is available, every promise that has been availed to you and I as a marketplace leader, as a leader in that organization, every promise as a parent, every promise as a married woman, as a married man, as a single woman, as a single man, every promise that God has placed available for you can only come into play by the power of the Holy Spirit. He says he confirms the counsel of his messengers. So, so this is what it means. This is what it means that when I say, for instance, the Bible says that we shall lay our hands on the sick and they shall be delivered and they shall be healed. What that means, that that's a promise that's available for me. So when I come and lay my hands on the sick and say, be thou healed in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit goes into you, your body, and makes the biological and chemical adjustments until you get healed, he'll not stop. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. When I stand here and I pronounce favor upon you, even as you watch, and I decree uh, Psalms 5 and 12 that you are surrounded by favor on every side, that indeed, uh, that, that, that indeed, that, that the Holy Spirit goes forth and surrounds you. He confirms God's word, goodness and mercy and blessings. You know, when I pronounce those things, when I declare open doors, the Holy Spirit goes forth indeed and makes it happen. In Mark 16 and 20, he says this, he says, and they went out and preached everywhere. 
Read it with me. And the Lord working with them, confirming the word through their accompanying signs. The Holy Spirit confirms the word of God, confirming. He was working with them. So whenever they would preach, he would confirm. Whenever they would preach signs and wonders. So when I preach even right here, he confirms within your spirit. You understand and hear him and feel him and know you are convicted. Why? Because the Holy Spirit confirms the word of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Many, for many years, the body of Christ has debated, should we, should we be biased to the word of God only? So there's teachers of the word of God that say, you know, it's about the word of God. You know, leave those things of the spirit. You know, you know let's, let's concentrate on the word of God. And then and there is another segment of the body of Christ that, that, that debates and says, look, let's, let's talk about the Holy Spirit, the power, the manifestation. And, and, and you probably wondered, which is which? I pray today that you will see it clearly that the Holy Spirit and the Word work in tandem. They work together. None can be neglected. You know, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit both work together to make you a victorious Christian and so uh, in your journey of life. So one, he is a revealer of God's Word. Two, he confirms God's word. And three, he's the custodian of the anointing. He's the custodian of the anointing. Out of the book of Isaiah 61, uh, we read one to three. I read this portion of scripture the last time I was talking about the Holy Spirit. It says this. He says that the spirit of the Lord God, up, oh, God is upon me. The spirit of God, Lord, is upon me. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. This is the messianic, uh, you know, uh, uh, prophecy. Uh, and, and he says this, the spirit of God, because he's upon me, he will be able to enable me to preach good tidings. It takes the spirit of God to preach. It takes the spirit of God to heal the brokenhearted. It takes the spirit of God to proclaim liberty to captives. It takes the spirit of God to open prisons to those that are bound. It takes the spirit of God to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Come on, somebody, to comfort those who mourn, to console those who are mourning in Zion, to give beauty for ashes. That will take the anointing and the spirit of God to come and declare oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise. It can't be seen. It's a garment of praise in, for the spirit of heaviness. You know, that takes the anointing to do all of that. And so that's why I said, you know, he reveals God's word. He confirms God's word, but also he's the custodian of the power of God. He's the custodian of the power of God. And so he brings it to the table out of Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. We find that the Bible says this. It says that truly, but truly I am full of what? Read it with me. He says, but truly I am full of the power of the spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. The power of God. Out of Acts chapter 1 and 8, when he was speaking to the disciples, he was saying, but you shall receive what? Power. He's the custodian. That anointing is the power of God. And that is responsible. That's brought to you by the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power power as a parent as a businessman you need power and that power is what you know places an advantage on you when men can't understand why certain things are working out for you it's the power of the holy spirit when 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 people wonder how come your things are working out how come you know you are sustained in even in covid-19 even when the economy is not as good as it ought to be how come for you it is well you know it's the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that it shall be well the moment you will embrace the Holy Spirit in your journey as a Christian. So you're powered by the Holy Spirit. This is a call. Let today be a call for you to embrace him that is available and he desires to help you. He desires to uplift you. He desires to turn an ordinary life into a fearless one. He desires to make you a supernatural being. You can enter that boardroom and you're able to debate and present presentations that are, you know, viewed as, and they would wonder, how come you're able to do this? They won't know that there is somebody that's powering you. You will be powered by the Holy Spirit. Number one, 
He's the revealer of God's word. Number two, he confirms God's word. Number three, he's the custodian of the anointing of God. And number four, he provides a system of conviction. Out of John 16 and verse 7 up to maybe verse 8, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, who is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, he says, I'll send him to you. And eight, let's read eight together. He says this, he says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You see, it beats my understanding. The Bible says that Jesus performed so many miracles. But even the, the miracles that were routed through the power of Jesus, some men doubted. Signs and wonders are good. But the one that brings about conviction is the Holy Spirit. Signs and wonders are wonderful, but never replaceable. They can never replace the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Every man is created with a spirit on the inside of them and a void, a, a conscious. They, the, and, 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 and the voice that speaks to that conscious is the Holy Spirit. When you are a Christian and you're about to fail and you're about to sin, the Spirit of God is talking to you. When you are about to go off, falter, fail, fall, he will always speak to you. He will convict you. He'll say, hey, don't do that. Hey, that's going to, you know, kill your covenant. Hey, that's going to take you away from the love of the Father. That's going to distance you from God. That's going to block you, you know. That's going to make a covenant with the enemy. And he will always be speaking to you. I'm, I'm reminded when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus had just resurrected, and, and, and he was on his way to Emmaus. Uh, there were two men that he met. Two men walking, uh, you know, to, to Emmaus. And, 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 and these two men walked with Jesus. But they did not recognize Jesus. They didn't know that it was him. Just because you are near the things of God does not mean that you have known him. Sleeping in a garage will not make you a car. And today, you can know him. Today, even as I was sharing, you, you, you probably say, all these things that the Spirit of God is able to bring you know, me to, I want them. That begins by a knowledge of him. That begins by you accepting him, asking him to forgive you. He's willing, he's available to forgive every sin, no matter what you have done yesterday or the days before. He's willing and able today to, come, to, to eradicate all of that and start a new experience. Even you that just knew him, you know, for who he is, but did not have the experiential, uh, you know, uh, 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 the experience of his power. You can receive the Holy Spirit today. I believe even as I am talking about him today, he is here just as he's in your room, just as he's with you where you are watching this from. And he wants to change your scenario. He wants to turn ordinary into extraordinary. He wants to make natural supernatural. He wants to give you an advantage and if it's you who says, it's me, Pastor, today, let this be the day where what I did yesterday is forgiven of me and I am cleansed. You can say this prayer with me and God will start that journey with you this very day. And it's not hard. Simple. Say, say this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, no, 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 let's say it with meaning. Let's say it like you mean it in your heart. Don't just go to say it out of routine. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I give you my life today. Forgive me 
of the sin that I have committed. All the sins that I, I have committed. Forgive me. I give my life to you. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. The Lord of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. And the spirit of the living God right now is ministering to you even as you just prayed that prayer. Even for you that knew Jesus prior, the spirit of God wants to give you that, 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 that experiential power where you will walk in his power in the marketplace at home. You will walk with full knowledge of who he is and what he brings to your table to make you an extraordinary supernatural being. And that's why the spirit said to me that this is the word of the Lord that comes to Zechariah, uh, to Zerubbabel, um, and I like to replace that with my name saying, or with your name, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. May God bless you. May you have a fantastic week as we cross into October. Next week will be October, but may God increase you and make you a supernatural being and, and a one that is powered by the Holy Spirit. We love you and we can't wait to see you yet again. Welcome back, friends, from that powerful, power-packed word of God from our lead pastor, Pastor Pato. Pastor Pato, thank you so much for being diligent and faithful in serving the Lord and being faithful to the call of God over your life. We are blessed and may God continue to use you to bring his word straight from his throne to the hearts of of his people. Pastor Pato, thank you very much. You know, one of the things, I love the Holy Spirit, and I think it's one of the mis most misunderstood uh, of the Trinity. But you know what? One of the things that Pastor Pato mentioned that stuck with me, I mean, everything was amazing, but the very first point that he mentioned, that the Holy Spirit reveals the word of God to us, just stood out for me. Because you know what? When we don't understand the word of God, then we're not able to apply it to our lives we're not able to, to, to memorize it even. I mean, you might know the Bible, but it might not have any effect on you. So the Holy Spirit illuminates the word of God. He illuminates the truth of God that we have just studied about, and that surely transforms our lives. I hope that your pen and paper was active. I hope that your notes were, were written. You know what? Don't leave them in your book. Make sure that during the week you go back and revisit those notes and study about the Holy Spirit. Study what we have, we, 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 we've studied today and remind yourself of, 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 of the truths that we have studied this morning. And you know what? Our YouTube channel is full of previous awesome messages from our pastors that have been faithful studying the word of God so that they can bring it to you hot and sizzling. So in case you want to watch any other sermons, come on, log on to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to catch many other sermons like this one you have watched today. There's one thing I forgot to do and I want to do it right now. So apologies to our very first time visitors. If you're here and you're logging on for the very first time, would like to welcome you. Uh, I know we're welcoming you at the end, but I hope you had a great time. I hope that you stuck through. I hope that you had fun. You know what? This is Five Church. Five Church where we have fun and, and in the presence of the Lord. So next time, be sure to log on. You're very welcome. If you're in a family, come on, let them give you a vibe hug, a nice warm hug and welcome you. We welcome you here uh, on behalf of our pastors. We welcome you uh, to join us even next time. If you don't have a church uh, you belong to. I want to challenge the old timers, the ones uh, that log on every single Sunday to watch our services. Come on, invite someone next Sunday. Don't watch alone. Send a link to someone next Sunday. Make Make sure that you don't attend service alone next Sunday because, what, because you know what? We all need Jesus. We all need to have an encounter with him and right here is the place to do so. We love you. We love you so much. We can't wait to see you again next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Be sure to come back and let's celebrate the Lord together. From Vive Church, with so much love, have a blessed week ahead of you. God bless you. <laughs>